Hey everybody, welcome to Falcon Play Space Food Truck, episode number one. This was originally a title that I was going to do a Falcon one-shot on, but the more I actually played it to get more comfortable with it, the more I actually enjoyed myself playing it, and I figured, you know what? Kind of a fun little game to actually do more than one episode on, and hopefully a few of you guys will enjoy it along the way as well. This game should be coming out on Steam on the 24th, which should be today when this game go or when this video goes live. So assuming I got my scheduling correct here, it's going to be available now. So if you like what you see, definitely check out the description below. There'll be a link to the store page itself. Now, what is Space Food Truck? You're probably wondering. It's a very good question. It's essentially a culinary space game, strategic base with a really big emphasis on a card system. Maybe not as in-depth as something like, say, Hearthstone or Hands of Fate even, but definitely fun enough to kind of quote you over over here. Ah, space sprinkled across its vastness are more exotic flavors than any single tongue could hope to fathom. We, the Galaxy Gourmet crew, risk our lives to bring the finest dishes from across the stars right to your home planet, and to earn money so we can repay our creditors for this very expensive spaceship. The captain has spotted our course, or plotted our course, I should say. The chef selected some signature recipes, and engineer says all systems are go, and the scientist? We prefer not to ask what he's up to anymore. All we're missing are fresh ingredients and hungry customers. Let's go. Alright, so that'll be a little bit of our introduction right there. So essentially, that kind of plans out what the entire premise of the game is going to be all about. Right now, we're going to be jumped into the world map over here. I guess the, not really the world map, I guess more of the <laughs> space map, really. We have the captain's turn over here right now. Bonus card, draw an extra card. Brought to you by Zapmark. So how this is going to work out, right now we had like a random event where we got an extra card. Essentially how this is going to play out every single turn is that you will have five cards to mess around with over here. Some of them will be like based on your class itself and that's going to be the only person that could use this type of uh, card. Then you have cards like this over here which is everybody's use. And then this over here would be like the power bonus right here. The one with that orange little um, hexagon or uh, I guess shape right there. Hexagon. Is it a hexagon? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six sides, I think that's about right. And then there's also a card value with it, which you will use to actually buy stuff in the Zap Mart, which we'll get into pretty soon. So right now we're starting off with the captain. The captain's role in this is to actually get you from point A to point B. So we want to make progress on the map with the captain. The chef will actually try to start getting the ingredients up here noted to start making some of these recipes and, and um, meals, which you will have to take to a certain part of the map to deliver. Plain and simple, right? Well, it's a bit more complicated than that, but right now we'll just go on with the basics here. So we're going off with the map with the space captain right now. So, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to hold on to this hall pass card. Really important, mind you, because some random events will actually be moving you from one room to the other, which is going to be kind of important. So I'm going to hold on to this card for a fact. Right now, though, I'm going to say that we're going to do some traveling with the space captain over here. Our first thing that we have to make is the sweet tobagi, which is going to require space kale owned by nobody, so nobody in our crew has the card in their hand, and can be found via Zap Mart, which is relatively easy to find, and also the Blue Mead, which is owned by nobody, but we can find it through the Zap Mart as well. So let me go over here and go into Engage as the Cap. Play with power to charge the FTL drive, then travel as far as your charge allows. Alrighty. So right now we have no charge, so we can't jump right now. But if we use these cards over here, we'll be able to charge this card to make some jumps in the map itself. Now I mentioned that the hall pass is going to be really important, so... At the moment, we don't have to move to another room, so I could definitely use this up to power up this card over here for a few jumps. So, I'm thinking we go ahead and do a Taste of the Future, Taste of the Future, and these will be just like spam cards you would use for, like, you know, power, things like, you know, this card over here, for instance, right? So we have three right now that we could jump to. I'm going to go ahead and j um, toss the Hall Pass in here as well. So we're going to have four charges to our jump right now, so let's go ahead and submit. This will take us over here to the world map itself, and we have three jumps left in us right now. Our first um, primary target is going to be the first um, area to drop off our meal over here, which is going to be the Ontarian. Home of Earth's Canadian exile, sadly, its soil is unfit to grow maple trees. <laughs> yeah, you would, Canada. So we need to make the sweet tobagi for this area right here. So as the captain, you want to start making your way towards there, and then your chef's going to actually try to get that meal in time prepared. Once it's done, you deliver it, bada bing, bada boom. First objective done, you have three of them as a matter of fact. So right now, um, since this is going to be all the way down here, and we're over here, I'm going to jump, I'm going to say probably, hmm, we have three jumps right now. We have the Pluto 2, definitely a planet this time. Uh, if you read these, by the way, they'll have like different type of events, and also they will trigger different RNG events that could be either positive or negative, or it will help you find like a specific ingredient that you can't normally find in a Zap Mart as well. So keep that in mind, everything's going to be really important for this. I'm going to go here to the Yola Preserve, I want to say. Not the not the Yolo, not the Yoli Live Once, but the Yola Preserve. And I could jump over here. I could continue using my charges to try to get as far as possible. 
which is a possibility as well. Um, you know what? Let's actually try to get as close as possible to it. So we'll make all of our jumps and we'll jump all the way here to the X Regar. Make this jump happen right now. Alrighty, so we'll punch it. Now, when you jump multiple um, nodes, you have a chance to actually stopping in each and every single place to kind of either explore to find out what's going on. If you need to like stop to make some fixes to your system, your shields, your FTL, HP, blah, 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 blah. So um, you definitely do have that chance as well. A sure thing, you ask if anyone's picked up any Zapmart signals nearby. There's an exotic ingredient blueprint being broadcast not far from here. Could be something you need for today's recipes. So that's telling us right now that we hang out, we might get something pretty interesting. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and probably... Oh, it's going to give me an actual marker point. So over here, we'll find some quantum beans. Now, do we need quantum beans for any sort of recipe? We do. As a matter of fact, we need it for the Asari rose. So if we are over here struggling to find this ingredient, we now have a place where we could actually get it for a fact, so we'll keep that in mind. Let's go back over here, and we could now dock it, or just punch it, and you know what, for now we punch it a bit more, I'm gonna say. So at least now we have a pretty good marker to give us an idea, hey, there's an item over here in case I can't find it anywhere else. Pep talk. The captain will like a word. Another random player feels invigorated and draws a card. Excellent. So our engineer got an extra draw to their hand for next turn. Perfect. So now we're just gonna go ahead and punch it one more time, and see what happens here. Safe system, X Rangar. Uh, technically stealing! Your engineer swipes some power from a busted old satellite shields, refill plus two. Well, unfortunately for us, our shields I think were already pretty much boosted up, so um, that's not going to help us out much, but there you go. Random event based, right? So this is our last jump. We have to dock our ship here for a fact. Every single time you land to an area, you'll get new blueprints, which you can then choose to actually add into the Zap Mart, and then later on you can kind of purchase them depending on what you need. So. For a fact, for our very first uh, meal, the sweet tobagi, we're going to eat the space kale, apparently, and also the blue meat. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the space kale into the Zap Mart, so it'll be available for us to purchase whenever the chef takes his turn. And other than that, let's see, we could add a few more, because we have two slots available over here if we wanted to add a few more. We're going to need the post-cheddar cheese for the Asari roll, so we might as well just add this now and try to pick it up with our chef as well. And... Let's see, then we have a few other cards over here. The Gamma Toaster. Play with another card in your hand to double its worth and power. Destroy the card forever at the end of the turn, however. So, it'll be like a momentary boost, but then that card will be destroyed completely. Uh, the Claw of Duty. Play to pull any job card from your discard into your hand, which could be pretty useful, especially if you need to, like, you know, say, make a meal in time or something. So, I'm going to have that one added as well. And that's going to be just about it for now. We'll resupply the Zap Mart, and boom, we're done. So at this point, if I had some more cards left over, I could definitely play my the rest of them. But because all we have left is the engage card, which is going to be a jump, but we have no power cards to power that up, we can't continue any war. So we're going to go into next phase over here. Now over here, every single time you end a turn with a character, you have to draw at least one card from the Zap Mart. Which is... sounds good, but in theory, it'll kind of fill you up with a bunch of useless cards sometimes. So in a sense, you kind of want to keep your draw card or your discard pile, at least your hand in general, a little bit limited so that whenever you need to draw something that you need for a fact, it shows up and you don't have to worry about, oh, am I going to draw it or not? So uh, keep that in mind. Um, since we have to do at least one, right now we have a total hand value of six, meaning we could buy any card right now with a value of six or under. Um, we can get the footlong sandwich, which is uh, cost eight, obviously. I don't need the space kale nor the cheese. That'll be for the chef. So for now, I'm going to hold on to the hall pass. Now, the reason why I'm holding on to the hall pass is because sometimes you have to move characters to another room to avoid uh, terrible events sometimes, right? So I want to keep that in mind. Keep that in my hand just in case I do need it. I have three more coins over here and essentially to use up. But I'm going to go ahead and bypass that and say we're done here. We'll end our turn. All the cards that we used up will be drawn to the discard pile. And then... We'll pick up from our draw pile, and then the discard one will go ahead and refill the draw pile again. So, relatively simple so far, but it can get a little bit tactical down the line. The Bad Dream. The captain nods off at the helm after an all-nighter. Discard two power to wake up, or we hit a space probe for one damage. Now, the damage will not affect you if you have shields, obviously. So right now, if I couldn't, you know, meet this requirement, I could just go ahead and um, take the damage and lose one shield, but we won't take any damage to our HP overall. You hit zero HP, obviously game over. So, unfortunately though, we have to meet this requirement with the Chef. So I won't be able to do anything interesting over here with the Chef, but I might go ahead and just use up the, the, the cards over here, the email ones, which are basically pointless. So I'll use up these two over here to avoid damage, and we'll dodge this uh, event, and we're fine, right? Perfect. Now as you can see, for my turn with the Chef, I only have three cards as opposed to five. 
Now the cooking one is going to be for every two power play with this, toss an ingredient from your hand or this card into the pot. So whenever you're ready to start cooking your meal to sell off, you definitely want to have a few of these involved over here. But since we are still missing most of our cards and the this dude has not yet acquired any of these items, there's no point in doing this right now. And unfortunately, even though we have the Space Kale available in a Zap Mart, I'm not going to have enough money, I don't think, to actually acquire it next turn because of the turn that we used up cards to keep us from taking damage right there. So what I will do is I'll use the Taste Test. Play to draw two. Add one to your hand and toss the other card to this card, or you can destroy it in general, which is actually kind of good. You'd think um, destroying cards is a bad thing, but it's actually pretty good what I mentioned earlier of how you want to make sure you have important cards in your hand and not like a bunch of filler that's not going to help you draw the card that you need in time. So sometimes you definitely want to use the chef to destroy a card whenever you're overloaded here a bit. So I'm going to have the hall pass get thrown into my hand for now. And then this is going to be another cooking card. I'm going to go ahead and just discard it. I want to keep the cooking cards around, so I'm not going to destroy that one. Now, over here, we are essentially done. We could move around if we wanted to. Uh, we're not going to cook anything right now, so at this point, the chef is basically done. Ski will hit our next phase over here. And as you can see, luckily for us, the space KO is only three, which is, um, we have four. So we could definitely pick up the space KO into our little uh, discard pile now. So that would be part of our ingredients. As you can see over here, the sweet tobagi is now saying, hey, you have this in hand and it's actually owned by the chef, which is actually really ideal. Last thing we need now is the blue meat. So with this done, I already drew my card. I'm going to say that's about it, so we'll go ahead and end our turn here with the old chef. Perfect. And we'll draw again, and then the draw pile will be rejuvenated again with the discard pile. Scientist turn. Now, scientists will be used for different things, which you'll explain really soon right now. It came out of nowhere. The ship takes one damage. But luckily for us, we had a shield, so we avoided that damage right there. Alrighty. So, for the scientist, his main premise is going to be foresight and research. But with research, play this power, play this with power to unlock a lab research node, adding a new job card to someone's discard. So, what this is going to do is actually going to help you load up your certain class member's hand with um, cards for their particular interests. So, it's going to be really important, especially if you want to have like a bunch of cooking cards for the chef, a bunch of FTL drives for the captain, so on and so forth. Um, however, every time you do this, it's going to cost you more and more to actually unlock a card for their particular deck. So what you want to do is actually use Foresight. Now, check this out. For every one power played with this, peek behind one locked research node in the lab. So let me play this out and show you how this works out. I'm going to use Foresight along with BAM and BAM, and these guys have no power, so I will leave them behind. Let's go ahead and submit. This will bring me over here to the research uh, node itself. Now, because we have two research points for peeking, what I could then do is actually pick a random node and see what's behind it. So instead of like necessarily um, having to go down the line and just being lucky, I could kind of know what card is available to what class ahead of time. So I could definitely pick it if I really need it at a time. Otherwise, I could just say like, you know what, I don't need that. No point in actually acquiring that card just yet. So for now, we'll go into... Let's go with the captain over here. With Foresight, I unlocked Backtrack. Play with three power to return to any previously visited planet, which is going to be pretty good, especially if you, say, are in one side of the map, and then your next um, goal is going to be in the other side of the map, and you've already been there before. You could just essentially jump back in one fell swoop. So that's a pretty good card to have. So that's a good uh, peak for us. It's not in our card pile just yet, but at least now we know that it's there. And then with the other one, we'll go into, say, let's go into the chef one over here. And we have the secret sauce. The secret ingredient is science and a healthy dose of mayonnaise. This is going to be just for artificial ingredients. This will be a power card. Nothing too great, but it's something that we could definitely use for our chef in case we need power or even uh, money worth of the Zap Mart. So there you go. If I had any more powers left over or any more power um, cards, I could then use the research and actually unlock one of those things that we peeked into. But since I don't, we have to end our phase. The so next phase over. I'm going to the Zap Mart over here, and there you go. And let's see. For this guy... Something like Raw Silk is not bad, because it'll be like just a, a straight-up two-power card. Uh, we don't want the ingredients, obviously. And the sandwich, you know, adds one to this card's worth for each ingredient in your hand. So this will be more inclined for the chef. So I could go either Raw Silk, and there's a pretty good combination for Raw Silk if you find another card that actually powers up with more Raw Silks that you have, but I'm not sure if I'm going to find it anytime soon. So I'm going to go with the Last Resort one for now, and I'll end my turn right here. So that's about it. And there you go. This will be our new draw pile over here. 
Nothing good? Alrighty. Now, Engineer's turn. Engineer is going to be solely based on fixing anything that goes wrong in your ship. Crisis. It's an emergency. These two players have 12 turns to meet in a room shown. If they can't, the ship takes one damage. So, this is what I meant about the hall pass. So, for this event, if um, the scientist and the engineer do not meet up in the captain's room in 12 turns, we're going to take some damage to our ship. Now, if we have a shield, we're fine, but, you know, you want to avoid that in case you can't necessarily fix up your shields in time. Now, the engineer will be over here fixing everything for you. So, your doors, they get messed up. If their door's locked in, you can't get into that room, so you'll need to fix that. Your shields, have to fix those. FTL drive being heard, have to fix that. And even the research node, which is going to be... Where's that going to be at? So over here? No, that's going to be the chat window over here. Eh, let's see. Can't really figure it out right now, but I'll show you at some point what I mean. Alrighty. Oh, you know what it is? It's lab. So at times, this will also get, um, quote-unquote, busted. And you won't be able to unlock any cards if this is busted, so you need to come over here and fix it with the engineer as well. Alrighty. And this right here will tell you what's going on in your ship in the uh, engineer's room. So as you can see, our shields are one of two because we actually took one damage from a random event. So we will have to keep that in mind as well. So right now, we have the trusty wrench. Let's find out what this is all about. Play with power to charge your wrench and fix broken items around the ship, which is, you know, our shield right there. So I could use this up with maybe one power card, fix that, and you're fine. However, you could also upgrade your ship. Play with one power to add a point to your FTL engine or shield capacity. So you can increase your shield over time as well by using upgrade ships as well. So you know what? I kind of want to do that as much as I want to fix up the shield. As a matter of fact, what we could do is probably do this. Check this out. Maybe do Trusty Wrench with uh, one power card. We'll submit over here. And we'll come over here and fix up the shields. And boom, we're fine over here now. Let's go back. And I have my cards over here left over. Let's go ahead and upgrade the ship. One and two. And submit. And you take Malfunctioning Engine Core you picked up during your last outing and are able to repurpose it for the Galaxy Gourmet. As you begin to bolt the, board, the part onto the ship's central electronics, you realize it won't exactly fit. You can only route additional powers to the shields or the FTL engines. Choose a chip stat to increase its maximum by one. So, do you want shields or FTL? Let's go with shields for one to avoid damage, and there you go. And that's all we're going to be able to do, just one right now, huh? Alrighty, what's well, better than nothing? And since we're done over here, we can't really use this, uh, this upgrade card with no power card, so we'll go into next phase. And let's see here. Claw Duty could be pretty useful. This lets you play, um, pull any job card from your discard into your hand. So if you need something right there and then, you can definitely just go ahead and pull it. You know what? I don't think this is a bad card for the Engineer. Especially if you need to fix something on the fly. So let's go ahead and grab Claw of Duty over there. It'll cost me six, which is exactly what we had, so we're fine. End our turn, and we'll go ahead and repackage ourselves over here. And it'll be the Captain's turn yet again. And as you can see over here, we'll have a random event, obviously. Crisis! It's an emergency! These two players have 12 turns to meet in the room shown. If they can't, the ship takes one damage. So we have to have Captain and Scientist meet up in the Engineer room itself. And this will be noted over here as well. Remember our first one, which was Scientist and Engineer and the Ship Captain? That's going to tell you right here. And our new one's going to be right here as well. So, this is kind of like a little bit of an introduction I want to do first and foremost. Uh, I want to wrap up the episode here. Next episode, we play a bit more now without having to explain everything, but at least I'm going to give you a good idea as to what exactly I'm doing, because it can be a little bit overwhelming at first, but once you get the gist of it, you're kind of, you know, in the driver's seat, albeit, you know, random events that you have to kind of meet, and also the luck of the draw as well with card games. But this will be Space Truck episode number one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a thumbs up, leave a like. The support does mean a lot. Stick around. We will do maybe another two episodes or three. See if you guys enjoyed it. If you do enjoy it, we'll go forward with it. Otherwise, we'll wrap it up, but at least I've given you a pretty good idea as to what uh, Space Food Truck's all about. I will catch you next time.